is Di from Be Mama with Style, and I wanted to do a Disney dining recap video. So we did a number of character dining experiences on our most recent trip in March of 2019 for spring break. And I was actually able to get a ton of character dining for this trip. Character dining was easy to book, much easier than on our fall trips. Those tend to be the hardest for me to fall and then around Christmas tend to be the hardest for me to get character dining. So I had um, pretty good luck getting what I needed, getting multiple times and switching out, you know, different times that worked around our fast passes and all of that. So to start out the trip, we started out um, the first evening we went to Disney Springs and for the first time we tried the Terralini Italian restaurant at Disney Springs. Really good, it was a nice start to the trip. Um, we got like flatbread and some pasta. Um, I would eat there again. We would probably want to try one of the other Disney Springs restaurants like the Edison or one of the other ones um, just to try something new on the next time. But it was good food and if you like Italian food, the ambiance in there was fantastic. So that's how we started off the trip. And then the first day we were at Hollywood Studios, we had a Disney Junior breakfast. So this was mainly for Natalie because she's still in that Disney Junior kind of phase. She really loves Vampirina and Vampirina was newly added into that meal. So Bella was not as much into those characters. A couple people commented about that. She was not interested in hanging out with them. She did not want her picture taken and that was fine. Um, she's really, she's almost nine. So she's kind of exited out of that Disney Junior stage. And so um, that meal was really for Natalie to see Vampirina. And so she got to see her and she loves seeing her. She loves Doc and she got to see Sophia and then Goofy from the Roadster Racers is there too. Um, so they um, both got their pictures taken with Goofy, but otherwise the other characters, Disney Junior characters, Natalie um, hung out with them and always has a good time uh, with them. The food was really good. So Hollywood and Vine is very touch and go for me. I've had a bad experience where it, really upset my stomach uh, was lunch that we ate a number of trips ago. The kids were really little. Um, this breakfast was wonderful. Food was all the right temperature, tasted great. They were keeping it freshly changed out because it's a buffet. Um, really great experience. So A plus, I think that they've gotten quality control and you know, under control there. Couldn't think of another word. Um, so it was all really good. So the rest of the day we ate quick service and the kids were grumpy part of the day and, and that's how the rest of the day went as far as food goes was quick service. Hollywood Studios is not my favorite for quick service. I will just say that. Um, we did get Starbucks, so we liked that they had the Starbucks in the park. And I found the new um, Cloud Macchiato. I tried that for the first time at Hollywood Studios. That was really good. Um, but their quick service locations at Hollywood Studios, not my favorite. I'm just, I don't know, I'm sick of eating chicken dinners. Anyways, um, the next day we went to Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom is one of our favorite parks. We enjoy the food there. We love all the restaurants we've eaten there. We had um, breakfast at the resort and then we had Tusker House for lunch. Tusker House, hands down, is just solid for us. We love the food, we love the ambiance, we love the characters, the kids enjoy it. This is a really fun experience, so we really enjoyed that one. And then uh, we had quick service dinner. I believe it was Flame Tree Barbecue for dinner and it was overall good but again no my favorite quick service I like the safari um I was just over on the other side which is probably my favorite in Animal Kingdom um but we just needed something quick and we were over by Dino Land I'm not a big barbecue person so don't you know I, I really honestly just don't care for barbecue so overall it was fine um and then the next day we were at Epcot this was supposed to be like a big Dining reservation day for us. They got kind of muddled up. So we had um, we had breakfast, I believe, at the resort that day. It's really bad because it's been a couple weeks. I can't really remember. But we had an Acre House lunch scheduled, and it was like at 1.15 or something around there. And the kids got hungry before we got over there. We were trying to get stuff done and play at the play thing and ride rides. And so we just barely made it over there and Natalie was melting down. I didn't have snacks in my bag or anything. I was really wishing I would have had snacks on me at that point because she was hungry and my husband was hungry too. Um, but we had a really good lunch there once we got some food in her system. The one thing I do like about that place is they have like a little mini buffet that you go take some little like appetizers from and then they bring your entree out later. 
So the appetizers kind of tidied her over and then she could go hang out with the princesses. They do a fun parade there. Um, the kids really enjoy the princesses. Both of them like the princesses there, so that was fun to watch. And we had a really nice meal. I got the herb roast chicken, which was really good. And penguins barking. <laughs> and um, the kids both like the desserts there as well. So really good meal and we generally enjoy that one. Um, that night, we were supposed to, the kids were going to the Pixar Play Place, and we were supposed to have dinner at Narcosis at the Grand Floridian. We are going to have a date night there. So I made the reservations. The reservations were for 5.40. We had a Spaceship Earth Fast Pass that was from 4 to 5. And we went right at the beginning of the window, and we thought we could ride Spaceship Earth real quick, get on, get off, and then get over to drop the kids off at the Contemporary, and then get over to the Grand Floridian for our diner reservation. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Not even nearly enough time, but the main problem was we got stuck, the Spaceship Earth ride broke down, or whatever we reason, I don't know the reason, it stopped for 30, 35 minutes. So that put us behind, so we got on at around four, but in the middle of the ride, it stopped for like 30, 35 minutes, and I knew by that point we weren't making our reservation. By the time we got off, it was 4.45 or 4.50. It was closing in on five o'clock and we still had to make it over the Contemporary, drop the kids off at the kids club and then try to make, we didn't even remotely make it. I think we dropped the kids off and got them, by the time we checked them in and did their paperwork and everything, which takes about 15, 20 minutes, I think it was around 6.15. So we were already about 30 minutes past our time. My husband said, do you want to go over there and try to see if they'll get us in? I said, let's just not even waste the time trying to get over there and deal with it. Let's just go to Epcot and have dinner. So we missed our reservation. I'd like to do a makeup of that. Um, I was really looking forward to seafood, um, but that was bad planning on my part, so I'll own that. Um, I should not have got that Spaceship Earth Pass Pass as close as I did to the time we needed to leave, and the ride broke down, which just, that if the ride would not have broke down, we may have just made it, but it, it would have been too close. I shouldn't have made it that close. So, you know, you live and you learn. Um, but we had a great night. We had dinner. I didn't vlog a lot that night. We enjoyed each other's company. Um, we had dinner in China, and my husband loves Chinese food. So we had dinner in China in the quick service. We walked around, got some drinks, got some desserts, and had a great time. So it was a good Disney date night. And then our last day there, and the kids loved the Pixar Play Place. I should probably, I thought about making a video, but they're closing the children's activity centers, which the kids are really sad about. Um, they love the Oceaneer Club, and that's honestly the biggest reason they want to go on a Disney cruise again is because the Oceaneer Club, plus the cruises are just fun. But um, they love the Children's Activity Centers, but sadly they are, well, I guess they're closed now because it's April. Um, they were closing at the end of March. So the kids had a great experience there. So I thought about talking about it, but it's closed, so it's kind of a mute point, but they really enjoyed it. They had a great time. Um, characters came and visited them. They had a dance party, lots of activities, loved it. Should also do a video on the minivan service. Loved it. So as a spoil alert, loved it. Would absolutely use it again. Anyhow, so that was like our Epcot night. We had the Pixar Play Place, used the minivan, had a great time. And then our last day there, we went to Magic Kingdom. We got to try some of those new ice cream cones. We met up the Jones family and did that, so that was super fun. Um, we did some, uh, we actually had our Chef Mickey's. I had it for the last day we were driving out and I moved our Chef Mickey's Diner Reservation before we went into Magic Kingdom. So the kids got their Chef Mickey's Reservation. Food was good. Um, we tend to like that one, although it sometimes gets mixed reviews. Um, we tend to like that one. Our preference is for breakfast and the kids usually request that one, so that's why I tried to get it. Um, we like the classic characters and just has good variety of breakfast food and all that. Um, we had quick service for lunch and then for dinner, we left Magic Kingdom and took the boat over to the Wilderness Lodge. It's the first time our family's ever been there and seen it. It was beautiful surroundings, beautiful lodge. And we had dinner at Artist Point and we did the Snow White Storybook dinner. So I was looking forward to this one. This was a new one for us. It's a newer dinner. Um, a really interesting mix of characters, Grumpy, Dopey, Snow White, and the Evil Queen. The Evil Queen does not come around at the table. She goes to a center in like a picture area. So if your child may be scared of her, you don't have to worry about her coming to the table. Um, 
The kids enjoyed the characters. Grumpy was hilarious because Grumpy was like mm, not having it. And like Natalie would talk and he'd be like, <laughs> so Grumpy was hilarious. He's akin to um, like the stepsisters in 1900 Park Fair. That's why we like that one. Um, so he was really funny. And then Natalie and the evil, clean, <laughs> evil queen, they hit it off, which was hilarious. She loves seeing the evil queen. So if your child likes villains, it's a great place to see one of the villains. The food was really good but it met our palate selection. So let me go in depth a little bit more on the food. The food probably gets very mixed reviews and I completely see why now. So I tried to show a little bit of it in our video, which I'll try to remember to link down below. The food, um, it's, it's not like totally wildly like, you know, you, you know, a super unique like palate. I mean, it's like prime rib, I got prime rib. Um, so it's not like super unique, but it did have some interesting flavors. So like the potatoes had like horseradish in them. I happen to like horseradish, but if you don't like horseradish, you're out of luck. So there was some interesting flavors like that, that we all happen to like butternut squash soup. We were all really enjoyed that. Um, didn't really care for the meat patty thing, whatever that was. Um, but other than that, I mean, I enjoyed everything, but it was to my palate liking. So I could see that if you didn't like some of those flavors, there, there really wasn't, it, it was not a big menu. There was not a lot to deviate from kind of that palate. So the kids did well. They brought them their own little appetizer plates, which were great for them. They had like you make your own butter, a little roll, some veggie sticks and stuff. They enjoyed it because they ate that kind of stuff anyways. So it worked out well for them. Um, Natalie got the prime rib, which make sure you cut it in small pieces because I cut it in too big of pieces and she actually almost actually choked on one. But everything was fine. Um, Isabella got something, some vegetarian thing that she didn't like at first, so they ended up bringing her out pasta with some red sauce on it, which was fine. And I can't remember what my husband ordered. He's walking past, I should ask him. <laughs> Anyhow, um, the food was fine. Now, here's the thing. I'm glad we tried it. The ambiance was great. It was fun. It would not be our favorite character dining meal in general or dinner. 1900 Park Fair for me is a little bit more fun because there's more of the characters that can interact more with you. The stepsisters for me on that one, just hands down, the interaction with them is hilarious. Like every single time we're at 1900 Park Fair, it's just, it's hilarious and it's jovial and it's fun. We also got a couple of the alcoholic adult drinks um, at the, um, Snow White meal, which we enjoyed, but I prefer the alcoholic drinks at 1900 Park Fair. Um, we also like the buffet because then you can kind of get whatever you feel like that day. Some days I feel like chicken, some days I don't. So I like that it's not as narrowing and limited. So if you have a more limited palate and you're trying to decide maybe between those two meals coincidentally, I would probably pick 1900 Park Fair because it has a wider range of um, foods that you can pick because it is a buffet and the characters there there's more face characters that can interact with you so I see us doing 1900 Park Fair again I'm glad that we tried the Snow White meal I don't honestly know that we'll do it again the cost of it was almost $300 or right around $300 the food has gone up and so I historically don't do the dining plan I think we've done the dining plan one trip and historically and we had like meals left over and I was like getting snacks to bring with us because we typically, if we're doing quick service, we get like one, well, when the kids were little, we got one adult meal, one child meal, and that was enough for everyone to split. Now they're starting to eat more. <laughs> That's a difference. So for breakfast, we maybe get two adult meals and like a little side thing or two child meals and one adult meal or whatever the situation may be. <clears throat> so food has gotten more expensive. And so going forwards, I do think I would consider the dining plan. So the kids are getting ready to turn nine and seven. So at that kind of like upper grade school range, I can now see where the dining plan would come into play and be a benefit. So food for us, I believe we spent around, I think I said in the other video, $2,200. I think 1100 of that was character dining because we did Hollywood and Vine. We did Tusker House. We did um, Acre Haas. We did, we missed our Narcosis um, reservation, which I got charged just a fee for missing it, so we didn't have to pay for like a full meal. 
um, we had Chef Mickey's, and we had the Snow White meal. So those five that we actually made it to, we had six and we missed one, but with the five that we made it to were about $1,100. Does that math even work out? I think that's right, because they're typically around $200, but the Snow White meal was pushing $300. Um, so at that rate, I would've been way better off getting the dining plan, just to be honest. So I think the dining plan, I can't remember off the top of my head what it would've been, but I think it would've been $1,400 or $1,500. And so by the time we added up all the other food, quick service meals, you know, breakfast, snacks, and then going to Starbucks, it was like, I think $2,200 um, for food. So um, something to consider for next time. I don't think we've ever had a trip like this where it's been, it's usually really, really close. Usually really, really close. So they did raise prices on food since the last time we've been there. And um, no, character meals were noticeably more expensive than prices I remember paying in the past. So I think that's just the difference. We, okay, I do need to put an asterisk here. We don't normally historically get alcoholic drinks um, at the meals in the past, and we did this time. Um, get like, you know, at dinner, maybe he and I both get like one drink or I get one, you know, fruit fruit drink, which is a little bit more expensive and he gets like a beer or two. So that was part of the expense too. We probably spent a good three or $400, maybe? No, maybe not that much. Two or $200 on alcohol, just for, you know, like the occasional drink at night, cause it, it adds up too. So anyhow, Oh, that's the other reason why staying club level because they have a, like in the dinner area, they have like a wine and beer bar. So if we go to more that type of trip, that would be a benefit too. So anyhow, I'll talk about it in future videos. I feel like I'm kind of like this because I'm trying to multitask a day and work on my real estate class and try to remember a trip that was two or three weeks ago. I should have done this sooner. But anyhow, let me know if you have any questions down below. That's pretty much our thoughts on the Disney dining this time. Definitely gonna be considering that dining plan next time. And um, those would be my recommendations if you have a kid that's in our um, kid's age range, seven and almost nine, and you're looking at doing a number of character meals, like one a day or so, probably definitely look into the dining plan prices. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and let me know if you have any questions or video topics you'd like me to cover in the future down below in the comments, and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.